Thank you, Richard, for um, the invitation. However, I'm not quite sure if I should thank you, but uh, because this is one of the most difficult tasks I've been given. Normally, they ask me to talk about the content or to present certain results. Now, Richard said, it doesn't matter what you say. It's the way you say it. We want an example of a good presentation. And I thought, well, whoa, I'm not the one to do that. I was never formed or, or teached to give a good presentation. So I've been thinking about what to present, and I can give you some guidelines, etc. But actually, I'm, I don't know what that's worth. So I thought, let's just give a presentation I have. I chose one which might interest you, and then you can all critique me. And uh, in the end, I will say what I've learned from my mistakes in the past. So the topic um, is about stretching, because I thought everybody uh, might be interested in that. And actually, it's not to stretch or not to stretch, but I thought it was a nice title. Um, but my title is actually, what is stretching doing actually? And what do we know about it? And if we know something about that, what is the best technique to stretch? So that is the thing I will talk to you. Now, of course, we all know what is the result of stretching. We all know, and many, many studies show that. And I just looked at 2014. And I could have doubled the amount of references only in 2014 that examined the effect of stretching. And the effect of stretching is very clearly proven. It increases the range of motion. Okay, So we don't have to discuss about this. This is very, very clear. However, however, what does it tell us if we increase the range of motion by stretching? What is happening? Well, if we only look at studies who implement stretching and look at the result. We only look at the result. But we don't know why this result is happening. And sometimes we need to go into the mechanism, why something is happening. Because if we don't, we might draw wrong conclusion. And I will show you a film to, look, to, to understand what I'm, I'm trying to say. So look at the film, and my message is, if you only look at the result, your conclusions might be wrong. So this is it. Have fun. I hope you can see it. I put down the sound because uh, it was a little hard. So you see. So only looking at the result uh, doesn't always give you a clear picture of what is happening. Um, so um, what is increasing the range of motion? Is it the muscle itself which is lengthening? And that could be by increasing the amount of sarcomeres. Is it the connective tissue? Because if we stretch, we, all, we don't only stretch the muscle, of course, because the muscle is connected to the, with the tissue and is connected to the bone. So is it the connective tissue, the tendon, and the, the sheets around the muscle that we are lengthening. Or maybe we don't influence any of the tissue and we just change the stretch, stretch tolerance. Maybe people, after stretching for a few weeks, you say, well, this I can stand and I can go further. And nothing is changing in your muscle itself. So these are the three main questions we need to answer. And then we know why uh, stretching increasing the range of motion. So, if we only evaluate the range of motion, we cannot draw any conclusions, except, of course, the conclusion that the range of motion is uh, increased. We need to do another study, and uh, another uh, parameter to examine, and that is the passive resistance measurement, which means that you actually, with a device, but this is what we also do in clinic, you, chain, you, you try to push the patient or the subject through the whole range of motion and you measure the amount of resistance that you get until you get to a certain uh, range of motion. And of course, you check, and you can see here with the electrodes, you check that the muscles are contracted. Okay, so suppose you measure this before and after the stretching, and you see that there is a decrease in passive resistance, you know something has happened in the muscle or the tendon, right? Although you don't know at this stage, is it in the muscle or is it in the tendon? So um, 
for um, evaluating that, you need another measurement. And this is a real-time ultrasound measurement where you can calculate, and I'm not going to get into detail today, but you can, you can measure the stiffness of the connective tissue. So if you change the stiffness, you change something in the tendon. So if um, your passive resistance decreases, but you did not find any change in the tendon itself, you can say the change we found is in the muscle. So by combining the results of these three measures, you can finally identify where the increase of range in range of motion comes from. So this is uh, what we did, and this is what I will uh, try to explain you. And so the question is, what is happening in uh, the muscle itself? What is with which uh, tissue are we trying to um, change? And which technique is the best? And I will uh, come to that, and you will understand the question uh, in a minute. So uh, what the study design we did is we took about 100 patients. We divided them in three groups, as you can see. One ballistic stretching group, one uh, static stretching group, and one control group. Now, ballistic stretching or dynamic stretching is actually stretching the way I learned it when I was uh, something like this. So it is, it is the stretching doing this business. While static stretching is the stretching that you do like this. And of course, the control group that didn't have to do it. So the question is, which of the two techniques is actually better? Or maybe we are... Uh, influence a different tissue while we are using different um, techniques. And of course, we evaluated pre and post stretching uh, the three parameters I just uh, explained to you. So what are our results concerning the range of motion? Luckily, the control group did not have any statistical effect on the muscle length. Uh, however, both dynamic, uh, both uh, stretch groups did. So that's a good thing. Now, when we, so both groups increased their range of motion. And now we want to check out where does the range of increase in range of motion comes from. So when we look at the passive resistance over the certain range of motion, we saw that we uh, found a statistically significant decrease in the static group, while we did not find this in the dynamic group. Although, I must tell you, in the dynamic group, we found a difference, but it was not statistically significant. Let's take the static group. So we saw a significant decrease there. So we know something is happening in the muscle tendon unit. So is it in the muscle or the tendon? We don't know, but we know something is happening there. Now when we look in the elasticity we did in this uh, uh, patient group or, or uh, uh, subject group, we saw that the um, static group did not influence the tendon elasticity. So in other words, if the passive resistance is decreased, but there is no change in tendon stiffness, we, we must conclude that something happened in the muscle itself. So this is an indirect way of saying where the in increase in range of motion comes from, since we have no in vivo measurements to measure the uh, amount of sarcomeres in a muscle. When we look in the ballistic stretching uh, group, we saw that there was no significant difference in um, the passive resistance. However, we found a significant increase in the elasticity of the tendon. The results or the interpretation of this is uh, as follows. If we do static stretching, we have an effect on the range of motion. And especially this effect in range of motion comes from the effect of the muscle tissue. While if we stretch in a dynamic way, in a ballistic way, we have a significant effect on the tendon tissue. And now, why is this? And why did we come to this idea of examining this or studying this? It is very simple, and this was actually our hypothesis. And it's very simple to understand. If you, stake, if you take a stake, right? You take a ribeye stake, a, so there is a lot of collagen, there is a lot of tendon connected to the bone. And you take it 
with the muscle part and you take it to the bone part and you stretch it. Now, which of the two tissues will be most stretched, the muscle or the connective tissue? Well, the connective tissue is really stiff. Eh? That's why we don't like it. If you chew on it, it's, it's kind of a stiff material. So if you stretch this, of course the muscle will be stretched. This is what is happening in real life when the muscle is relaxed. And when is the muscle relaxed? When you stretch it in a static way. So static stretching is affecting the muscle tendon, uh, the muscle uh, unit. However, if you want to affect the connective tissue, and we have good reasons to do that, but that is another talk, if we want to affect the tendon tissue, we cannot stretch the, the muscle in a relaxed way because we will always influence the muscle itself. So we need a kind of a contraction of the muscle and then the tendon will be um, stretched. How can we reach this muscle contraction? By dynamic stretching. Because I was taught dynamic stretching was not good. And why was that not good? Because if you move too fast over a whole range of motion, the muscle will contract. Yeah? If you do this, your muscle will prevent this increased range of motion, and it will contract. And that is exactly what we need. Because if the muscle is contracting, we can influence the tendon. So this is perfectly what we thought, and this is uh, finding uh, uh, or proving what we uh, were thinking. So the take-home message is very simple. Not one technique is superior to another. It, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to influence the muscle, you take a static stretch. If you want to influence the tendon or the collagen tissue, you do ballistic stretching. And it's not the one way or the other. However, I must tell you, stretching is not always good. It depends on what you want. And just to show that stretching is not always good, or, or it's not always the more the better, I'm going to show you this short video. It has actually nothing to do with the presentation, but it's a nice video. That's why I show it to you. And you can see that stretching might also have dangers. Maybe I should have put the audio on because you can imagine it's a nice reggae song here. <laughs> okay, so be dangerous. Uh, be careful if you stretch. So. To conclude, um, what did I learn? And I'm not pretending I'm, I'm giving good presentation. I just was asked by Richard to tell you what did I learn in my years of experience uh, um, in presenting. Well, first of all, when I gave my first presentation, um, my supervisor was in the audience and he said, well, you did a good presentation, but nobody probably followed you and nobody could go home with the whole message because you were talking too fast. So this was for me a really, I didn't realize that I was talking so fast. So I would say to you, this is something I learned, don't talk too fast. Then, and this is of course, these are my interpretations and this is what I've learned. Um, I have a kind of a simple brain and I can take only a few messages home. So if I make a presentation, I wanna keep it very simple. I wanna have one or two messages that you can take home, that you remember, and that you can use tomorrow in your practice. So my presentations are most of the time real simple, one, two goals, and then um, you, I think uh, you can uh, bring the message to them. So this is about the same. What is my main message? At the beginning, you need to say, this is what I want to examine. And at the end, you say, this is my take home message. And you actually repeat what uh, your message is. I think, uh, and we saw it here today a few times, prepare yourself, prepare yourself at home. This takes time. It takes time to make a good PowerPoint presentation, a good PowerPoint presentation. You can make a PowerPoint presentation in five minutes, but a good PowerPoint presentation, and I'm not so technical <laughs> as Dan, but a good PowerPoint presentation for me takes a while to get it right, to get everything uh, okay. And I, I'm not saying this is a good one, but, but it takes a lot of time. 
prepare yourself and rehearse at home. So when you are on stage, you're always a little nervous. That's good. But um, you might talk too fast or too slow, or you may not know exactly what you are going to say. Um, if you prepare well, and you, it's almost automatically that you will give this talk, and then you will be on time. You will not uh, lose your uh, idea of thinking. And, and I think uh, we saw some technical issues here today, which could have been solved if you go uh, to the, to the uh, computer or to your presentation and do it at home uh, as well. I had also a few um, talks that I've given, and I didn't rehearse it at home. And looking back, these were probably my worst uh, presentations. So now you probably think I didn't practice this one. Thank you. Um, but anyway, um, be yourself. Um, I like to make a joke. Um, but I think it's a stupid rule to say to people, you have to make a joke. If you don't want to make a joke, you don't make a joke. If, you want, if you're a serious guy, <laughs> but I'm not a serious guy, you're a serious guy. Don't, don't try to make a joke because it will be, it will be, they will feel that it's, that it's forced, that it's not you. So just be yourself, enjoy the moment, because I think being on stage is really nice. Uh, it's the same with, and, but I didn't talk about this, but uh, about the colors, what is it you like? You like this design, maybe I like it, but you don't like it, but just choose what you like. Uh, that is you, you, you are presenting you with your, with your slides and with, with the way you present it. Um, we saw today, uh, I don't think I need to give you this, um, this uh, idea, because one picture tells you more than a thousand words. We saw a lot of pictures here, so, so that's okay, and, uh, and I guess we will hear about that uh, a lot. Um, I also think you should only give a talk about the topic you're really comfortable with. I also gave some talks on topics I was not really comfortable with, and that is really, really bad. Um, so, I want to I want to say to you, <laughs> don't ever do that because, or give a presentation from somebody else. Yeah, that happened also, and that is really the the worst. So thank you, um, thank you, Richard, thank you, Rod, uh, thank you, everybody. Um, if you want to give some uh, comments on my presentation, please don't do it in public. <laughs> okay. <laughs>